Hey guys, Saf coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and in today's video, we are taking another look at Rathalos Blademaster, specifically for the clan boss. Now, most of you will either have claimed him, or you're still waiting for Friday's champion chase. But whether you've claimed him or not, this video will be relevant to you if you are thinking about using him in your clan boss team. Now, in yesterday's video, I covered the basics of the Rathalos Blademaster, specifically around his passive, how it works with counter-attack, joint attack, ally attack. So if you want to know all the technical and all the specifics about this champion make sure you check out that video before you continue on with this video because it's relevant for some of the things we're going to be talking about so in this video i have got four different clan boss teams that i'm going to be showcasing from a beginner clan boss team to a traditional all the way through to some unkillable or block damage options now if you want a true unkillable option using man eaters i would highly recommend you check out scratch's video he did a video on an unkillable double man eater type team with Rathalos to showcase his potential using the Fury set. We're focusing pretty much on the block damage when it comes to the unkillable teams, um, but obviously the traditional teams will need to be a bit different as well. Now, what makes him especially good for clan boss is you get a, a guaranteed A1 decreased defense. So if you're in the early game, or if you've just started playing, or if you haven't been playing for that long, having an ability on an A1 that places decreased defense that doesn't require accuracy is very valuable. The only downside is it is only a 65% chance. So you're not going to be able to get this on all the time, especially if you plan to use all of his abilities and not just cycle back to his A1 more often. And we do have some technical challenges that we have to overcome when it comes to Rathalos Blademaster for the clan boss. Specifically, he self buffs his increased speed on the A3. So if you've got that enabled, Build, that could potentially break any sort of speed tune and you have available. I've tried to work it into his abilities because I think the damage output and the increased crit damage is well worth including. So I've managed to find ways to include it in the speed tune, but some speed tunes you might just find if it's falling or it's breaking or it's failing, you have to turn this off because this increased speed buff is probably applying in the wrong moment in time. And any clan boss team we want to run with this champion also has to bring a HP burn because he gets so much like additional damage from HP burn. So you are forcing yourself into a very narrow pool of options. But the big reason why we want to bring him to clan boss is this A2 ability. When it attacks a boss, it's going to deal 100% ignore defense. So it's going to do true damage. And the multiplier for the AoE versus a single target is the same regardless. So you don't really get a penalty for doing an AoE here. It's about four times attack. When you pair it with the HP burn, when you pair it with the fifth skill, you know, if you've seen any Rathalos videos, you know by now it hits incredibly hard. So I'm going to start with the team that I showcased on my live stream that I did when Rathalos first came out. The first day we could get him on midnight. We built, I built a clan boss team in preparation. I'm going to showcase that team. Then I'm going to show you what I think is actually better than that team to run. And then I'm going to show you some options you can run based on traditional and sort of a beginner team. Now, unfortunately, I don't have access to their test server, so I don't have unlimited resources. I'm playing the game exactly like you guys are playing the game. And if you are playing the game and playing Cintranos, you know by now Silver is an absolute travesty. So I do not have the resources to build four different clan boss teams to show you the damage output and the potential. So I'm trying to focus exclusively on the teams that I already have built so I can use that Silver for other things. You know, we've got other content that I need to cover into in terms of building champions. Like I've, I've got the Chronum on the backlog I've been waiting to build, but I just need the Silver first. So I haven't got the Silver to build the traditional teams, but I will show you the actual speed tunes and also cover how you would build him in this video. So let's start first with the first team that I'm going to show you, which is a, it's a variant of the Myth Fu team, uh, but it is putting a 3-1 champion in there alongside Rathalos Blademaster. And the champion we're going to be using is Skrunk. Now, Skrunk is very good because he's going to place a HP burn, which is what we require. He also self-buffs increased attack. So on a 3-1 ratio, what tends to happen is one of the three attacks always happens without increased attack because of the nature of you going three turns Seekers only go in two turns. You just always outrun one of the increased attacks. So the fact he can place increased attack means you can cover that increased attack moment so that you can actually keep his increased attack on this champion specifically consistently all throughout the fight. He also will actually scale his attack and crit damage based on the number of times the HP burn triggers. So after five turns of a clan boss, he's going to get 25% more attack and 25% more crit damage. We also bring an A1 weaken. Rathalos is going to bring us our decreased defense. He's going to bring the weaken. It is a 75% chance when there's a burn, so it's not guaranteed like Rathalos. So that is something to consider. We've got him in Phantom Touch here in order to get some bonus damage. That's pretty much the best blessing if you already have a cruelty in your team for an epic or lower champion. 
Now, masteries wise, we have gone for what a typical block damage style comp will be. We've just gone down for the War Master and we've gone down for Laura Steel because we're going to try and get some bonus stuff in the speed and the crit damage set. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I absolutely would recommend if you're doing A1 non-guaranteed debuffs that you get Master Hexer and you get Sniper. You will see in this, this specific run the problems that we have in terms of sustaining decreased defense and weaken with this team without having Master Hexer and Sniper on both Rathalos and also on this champion. So this final build here is about, it's, it's a crazy build. I do have a lot of area bonuses, so that helps me build faster teams. I've got 12 speed that I always have available to me in across all clan boss champions. So that will help me build a bigger team here. And this team is not exactly early game, mid game at all. This is probably what a late to end game player would probably build. We got 5.6k attack, 296 speed, 292% crit damage, and also the Weaken, that is a little bit low here, 224. Probably I would need to go through and just check if I've missed any glyphs on his abilities to basically boost up. Like there's a plus seven there, um, there's a plus 10, that's pretty good. So just find out if I've missed a glyph for accuracy anywhere in his build. But of course, we will gain a little bit more accuracy from the fact that we have, you know, four accuracy there and we also have 20 when we have no skills on cooldown. So it will improve a little bit. So when you build Rathalos for a clan boss team, you actually, for the majority of the time, will not want to go towards a Relentless or a Merciless build because you don't really need to ignore defense of the boss and you really can't afford to be taking extra turns in a, specifically in a block damage Demitha style team where there's an increased speed creating that 3-1. In an unkillable team, you can probably, you, there'll be, be teams like Batty to that can support Relentless and maybe Relentless is better. But definitely because of his decreased defense being on the A1, Retaliation sets are going to be very powerful. Revenge sets are going to be very powerful. You can obviously go Reflex if you want. An ideal scenario would be triple Retaliation in good gear. My Retaliation is just not good enough, so I put one set in because this will stack to 45% with the Revenge. It'll give you a very good chance that you always counterattack. Now again, he's fully booked here. We haven't got on a soul on this guy. Um, and we have gone for a defense tree. Now, this is mainly because I plan on using him in Hydra more than I plan on using him in Clan Boss long term. But again, I will show you the issue when you don't go down the support tree, you don't have Master Hexer and Sniper, the challenges this will have if you depend on his decreased defense to place those debuffs. From a build perspective, he is in some of my really strong gear. We've got him in 7.3k attack, 211 speed, and 325% crit damage. This is a very end game build. This is very strong. So let me show you the quick speed tune and I'll show you this first run. So here is the speed tune I'm going to be using. We've got a Demitha in here. We've got an Ares. We've got a Seeker. These, and we've got a Skrank and we've got a Rathalos. This is a variant of the Mythfu without the aura. So the speeds are very high. We've got a 345 Demitha, a 299 Ares, a 218 um, Seeker, and then Skrank is 295. So you can see we're basically going 3 1 on the Skrank, 3 1 on the Demitha, 3 1 on the Ares, 2 1 on the Rathalos, and effectively 3 1 on Seeker because he gets the extra turn. But the key thing you want to note here is how Skrunk is always going to have increased attack up on all of his wave, which basically means every single ability he does will always have increased attack. It'll help boost his damage. And hopefully with a 3-1, we keep the weaken up more often. 2-1 with Rathalos is really dependent on his retaliation procs. Um, this is pretty good. Like You probably want to have a toxic set here with either an Ares or a Seeker because you have no poison, so it'll help just add some bonus damage. It's pretty high-end. But it's a very strong team. It's a variant of the Mythfu. Now we'll go through some AI setup here. As you can see, I'm opening with Spirit Thrust to try and get the decreased defense out early for Blade Master. And then we're prioritizing his Spirit Step Slash. We're allowing his A3 here because he's going on an A2, which means he doesn't actually lose increased speed. So it doesn't matter that we place the increased speed buff. So we can absolutely use this ability. There is some discussions happening around should you not book the A2 so that you can get this 200% more consistently on the A2. My personal opinion is try to generate as many extra skill usages as possible just to get more of the 200% rather than trying to narrow the 200% on the A2. I think considering the boss's defense is quite low in clan boss, considering all the other factors, the A3 is as good as the A2 and the A1 is not far away either. I'd rather just have more 200% than trying to make the 200% always on the A2. So that's why I'm allowing all of his abilities and I've booked them all and I'm going like as many retaliations as I can. Seeker in here is just going to open with his A1. Demith is going to prioritize the A3 and the A2. Always, whenever you're building these clan boss teams, tell Demitha and Eris to do their abilities because they will not do it if unless there is debuffs or things to impact. For example, Eris tends to not cleanse unless there's a debuff. Demitha might not always use the A2 if there doesn't need to be healing. Skrunk specifically will not HP burn on his A3 unless he can unless there's no HP burn out there. So you have to tell him to use the A3. And because it does a 15% turn meter fill, 
it can break the tune if you do not do that. So we've got him prioritizing his A2, but he's also forcing the A3 at the same time. So this is the setup here. Pretty much straightforward, full auto. I'm going to run it a little bit, and then I will show you the issues with this particular team. So we've managed to get, I think the next hit is the fifth hit. It's very difficult to keep track of the fifth hit. So it's very, you have to kind of like, in Clan Boss, it doesn't matter because you're not going to be watching it. But in Hydra, you always have to keep mindful of, am I close to the fifth hit? Should I prioritize a lower skill or a higher skill? I'm pretty sure we're on the fifth hit. is actually the best setup for it. We've got increased attack, increased crit damage. We've got weaken, we've got burns. This is about as high as I can get the damage output in this team without having some sort of protection sets on the Demitha. So let's see what he can do. Hopefully it's the fifth hit. 1.6 million damage. 1.6 million damage. And that is why he's very good for clan boss is he's going to be able to get you to the first keys or the second keys of your difficulty that you're on. Now, obviously, this is a high-end build. There are better builds available for you if you don't have all these speeds in this team that I will show at the end of the video that hopefully will get you just pushing further. Even if you're doing like Brutal at the moment, he should be able to push you up into Nightmare, even if it's a four key. So we can go through here and I just wanna show you the issues a little bit with the way that the decreased defense and weaken kind of falls off in this team. And it does make this team a lot less like high damage because essentially we're attacking without it. Now, luckily we had a counterattack there from the, re re the retaliation. So we were able to get the, um, the mastery counterattack because there was a stun that does not always happen. Um, but you can see his A1 is pumping for about 391,000 right now. It's pretty good damage. We'll see how far we come through. So far, we're sustained in the debuffs. There's another 489,000. 1 million damage. That's why I mean about the 200%. We did 1.6 million on the A2. His A1 did 1 million. Yes, it's a less damage, but I'd much rather have one more of those A1s at that 200% than not have it. It's a bit like Jin Toro. If you can run Jin Toro at 3-1, even if you lose about half of his damage, it's still going to output more damage because you get more of the A3s when they 5 hit. And one of those 5 hit is normally sufficient enough to overcome any sort of stat loss. So you absolutely, I think you just run him as much as you can. Now, here's the problem. We've lost Weaken. So until we actually get a Weaken back on the A1, we're, we're doing 25% less damage on all of the abilities we just did with our supporting cast. And... When you're building a clan boss team, the supporting cast actually contributes a fair chunk of damage. Like Seeker just attacked with our decreased defense. So did our Skrank. That was two attacks we didn't have with decreased defense. Having more consistency with these debuffs is probably very essential for any clan boss team you build Rathalos into. So I'm going to let this run through now. And at the end of the fight, I will show you the final damage scores. And then I'm going to show you what I think might be a better team than this one to improve that problem of consistency and also to add overall more damage into the team and then we have it 50 turns in we have completed the run and blade master has done 70 million damage now i have a plus two fully maxed out Chintoro, and even he doesn't quite get to those kind of numbers in my other team that i run with similar with these champions also here to keep into consideration seeker is doing a lot less damage because he's weak affinity on force and Skrank is doing about 43 million. Pretty respectable. 44, 44 million for a secondary DPS roll here, providing that HP burn and the decrease uh, and the weaken as well. Uh, Iris is coming in with 25.7 million. She is in a toxic set, so that's obviously going to help her damage. And Demitha is just shy of 10 million. But a lot of those supporting casts are losing damage because we're losing decreased defense and weaken a lot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the similar style team, but I'm going to substitute Skrunk for a better option. And we're going to just have to adjust Blade Master speed a little bit to make this work. So in the Skrank team, the main issue we had was sustaining debuffs. So you can absolutely change out Skrank and bring in what I think is probably a better option here, which is Farrakhan the Fat. Now the reason why he's very good, we get an ally attack, which means we're going to get an extra chance of getting a decreased defense every time the Farrakhan takes a turn on this ability using the Rathalos A1. We're also going to get the HP burn that we require to make Rathalos' damage work with poison. We're also going to get a decreased defense on the A1. Now, he doesn't bring weaken, which is a pretty big issue. You lose 25% of your damage, so that's going to hurt us a little bit. The other option you can go towards is maybe a, a Geomancer. A Geomancer could fit into this spot quite comfortably as well. But we've got this built here. I'm going to showcase this team, but let's see how it goes without a weaken on this team. Now, the, the speeds are slightly different here. I haven't made Farrak in the fat A3-1. Uh, champion he is instead a 2-1 champion so he is running at a 233 speed and you can actually speed this down quite a lot i don't want to modify my actual core clan boss team which is demitha eras and seeker but the 
The link that I will put in the description for this second team will show you the slower speeds. You can actually bring the speeds down quite a bit. You can bring the Demitha down to about 311, for example, even without an aura. You can bring the Eris down to about 270, 260. There's, there's a lot more flexibility. This is essentially a Myth Fu. We're just substituting the Fu Shan with Blade Master and we're using a Farrakhan in the DPS spot. That could be a Geomancer or someone else. From a team setup point of view, Farrakhan doesn't really need to, to do anything. We're going to prioritize this A1 and we're going to prioritize this A2 like this. Same setup applies to all of these. We are using the Rathalos A3. We're going to continue to use the Rathalos A3 and it will absolutely just run exactly the same way as the last team. Instead, we'll just have a 2-1 Farrakhan. Now, Farrakhan does bring increased crit rate and increased crit damage. So if you wanted to, you could run your entire team with 70% less crit rate. Although keep in mind that Seeker will outrun it. Some champions you can and some champions you can't. So this is the speed tune for this particular team. As you can see, we're going to have a crit rate buff covering the Farrakhan every single turn. The ARS will hopefully sustain it as well, as will the Seeker as well. The Seeker will retain it. The Farrakhan, the Fat, obviously won't because he doesn't place it on himself. So that's something to keep in mind. So the Farrakhan probably needs to be 100% crit rate, but the Rathalos, the Seeker, the ARS, and the Demitha, all of them can actually be... 70% crit rate, which should help you mitigate the speeds a little bit. I'll put the link in the description for all of the speed tunes that I'm showing you for this clan boss video. So I have had to modify my speed down a little bit. I've taken the protection set away and I've swapped in a single helm here. As you can see, I've got him down to 94%, 188 speed, but he needs to be at least 200 speed in this calculator to make it work. Something like 197, 198, 199. So 200 speed works. 7.1k attack, 324% crit damage. All we've done is we've just slowed him down a little bit to make this team work. Once again, it is full auto from the start. Now, when we come in here, it's, again, what we're going to have an advantage for now is we're going to have extra counterattacks, which is going to help us when we don't do what we just did there, which is land the decreased defense. And we didn't land it twice in a row, which is very unfriendly. It's very uncomfortable. Um, obviously, we need the HP burn up. We still haven't landed it, which is really unhelpful. Um, as we like, there's the HP burn, which is great. Now, the only difference in this team, Farrakhan is going to give us poisons as well so be careful with how many toxic sets you bring the normal summary with a clan boss team if you have no poisons whatsoever you can bring two toxic sets on a two to three one ratio if you have toxic set if you have any poisons in your team then you need to basically bring your toxic sets right down because what you don't want to do is overfill the bar with toxic sets and then you don't have any space to put your actual higher five percent because toxic is only a 2.5 percent whereas the farrakhan's gonna do a five percent poison so you can already see here we've got about seven debuffs on the bar um farrakhan's gonna now put it up to nine ten eleven it's basically pretty much full so just keep that in mind as long as you're not overfilling the debuff bar and you can still get your hp burn and your two poisons then you can bring a toxic set but be mindful of that if you're doing it so as i said at the start of this we are not carrying weaken that is going to drop the damage diet by about 25 percent which is quite a problem we'll see if we can line up a big hit for his a2 um, i think currently he's got uh that's his second hit i think he's got three more to do this is a2 so i think we just need to make sure that we get back onto the a2 just to see the damage difference without that weaken so we can see that actually maybe the weaken is much more valuable so what farrakin will give you is an acceleration of his is 200 he's giving you an extra skill usage uh, we can use this ability here. That'll give us the fourth. I'm pretty sure the next one is the fifth hit, which means that we're probably going to do it on the A1. Let's find out. It's always difficult to track these things. So this, I think, is the fifth hit. So that's one million damage. So the A1 is still producing pretty good damage without weaken there, but that's obviously 25% weaker. Let's see if we can line up an A2. So we have the A2 available. I'm pretty sure it's the fifth hit. If it doesn't do big damage, it wasn't. We need to, we need to count again. Uh, we do have HP burn and decreased defense. Decreased defense doesn't matter. We do have increased crit damage. Let's see what it does. 1.2 million. So that is the difference with not having weaken. Last time we were doing about 1.6, 1.7 million. So probably... Even Farrakhan in this particular setup is not ideal because you absolutely want that weaken. I would suggest maybe Geomancer looks like the way you would go. You'd still bring some good damage. You wouldn't be able to accelerate necessarily his, his passive is 200% as much because obviously Farrakhan is giving him this extra ally attack, which is giving him one, it's basically reducing on average his passive down to four skills because it's giving him a free skill. So we're going to get more of them. But it'll be interesting to see. We'll run this through now all the way to turn 50 and we'll see how much damage this actually does. So the fortunate thing about quick battle is us as content creators don't have to sit here now waiting 20 minutes for a clan boss run to run to see how it's going to do. When a quick battle list, let's see how much damage this does compared to the other one. The other one did about 160 million. This is going to do, when it comes in, 149 
million. So Skrank is actually performing better. 70 million was what Blade Master did last time. He's doing 58.9. So that tells you that bringing an extra ally attack there and losing the weaken wasn't really worth it, which makes sense because you've lost 25% damage. Seeker did perform a little bit better, as did Ares. That's probably just an affinity roll check. And obviously the Farrakhan is allowing them all to attack. So that's giving them bonus attacks. Farrakhan loses about 13 million on the Skrunk as well. So overall, Farrakhan could work in this type of team. But I still think you need that weaken. So I would lean more towards Geomancer, I guess. That is the way to go. Those two are two unkillable block damage type teams. Now, if you have not been fortunate enough to be able to acquire those Demithas, block damage champions such as Helicath and and those type champions, or an unkillable champion like Emic or Maneater, then you're going to go towards a traditional team. Now, especially if you're in the early to mid game, your first goal is just building like your starter clan boss champion team. Just basically the first team that you, you don't just throw champions in who are rank six, but you're actually trying to formulate a team structure. Now, the team that I've got on screen here is what I built somewhat for last year without the Wrath of Lost for the free to play series, what I was planning on building. It is a standard one to one, which means that every champion is going one turn to the clan boss's one turn team that is basically designed to just get you into a good nightmare key rotation where it's like you get it twice, you know, two keys to get the top chest. That's the idea with this team. It's never going to set the world alight because it's only going to one to one. And you are dealing with the issues of trying to keep your team alive, right? You're not unkillable here. So you have to build your stats up to stay alive. So let me explain how it's working. We have an ally protector in Nazana. This can be any ally protector ideally a three turn cooldown ally protector because you want to be able to go and replace that at the start of aoe one you want ally protection to cover aoe one and aoe two because ally protection will reduce the amount of damage you take significantly it's almost essential that you have it in these traditional teams so she's going to place the ally protection right at the start of the aoe uh, right at the end of aoe one so that means you get a ally protection covering you all the way through to aoe two and when you get to the stun turn it doesn't really matter so much because the damage is only on a single champion and that damage is based on that single champion's maximum hp that's how the boss sets the multiplier for the eight for the stun ability so you want to make sure that whoever you want to get stunned has low hp high defense because that will help keep him alive longer we're using Hoskerel here, who's a very unique champion for this. Hoskerel himself is, is immune to stun. We don't have a cleanser in this team. So ideally, what you need to do is either have an immunity to stun or a cleanse of that stun. Now, Hoskerel will cleanse any stun when he uses the A3, and he's also immune. So if he becomes the stun target, great. We don't have a problem. If he doesn't become the stun target, then at the start of turn AoE 1, he's going to cleanse all those stuns away and give you increased defense, which is a pretty good deal. We're then using Mordecai, which I think most free-to-play players would have started with if they've started recently, because he gives you increased attack and HP burn, exactly what Rathalos needs. That's going to give him a lot of damage. And then Rathalos for our damage and Deacon, just to provide a leech to keep us healing and a decreased defense so that we have a backup decreased defense. This team will not set the world alight, as I mentioned, but it will get you into a good position in Nightmare where you probably should be able to be three-keying Nightmare. And as I said, substitutions-wise, Nazana can be any three-turn ally protector. Hoskell really can be any cleanser. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. It's just I had Hoskell on my free-to-play last year. You can use any leech champion in the Deacon spot, but Deacon is pretretty good for this. You will disable his A3 on a one-to-one -one ratio, but if you want to bring someone else who has like healing with decreased defense or another utility, it's really good. Mordecai can be any HP burn with increased attack. If you've got a Brogni, for example, that could work really well. And then Wrath of Loss comes in here. So that is one team that you can build. It has got a 19% aura. I'll put the link in the description to this team. But once you start getting advanced a little bit more, then you are going to move towards a two to one team. So this two to one team is what I would say people move to in the mid to late game. Once they start realizing that they're getting unlucky with the champions, they haven't got unkillable and they haven't been able to build those teams. You're going to use probably Lydia here. Because Lydia is almost essential for every 2-1 traditional team. It's very hard to replace her. There are teams out there that can do it, but it's very difficult. She gives you decreased defense, weaken, increased speed, and strengthen. These four things are so important for the traditional teams. And having it in one kit makes this possible. Now, we've got Taragi the, Fo the Frog as our pr protector here. Again, a three-turn protector is what you need. Taragi the Frog is just an epic that I picked. It could be Kira the Watcher, the Sylph, Stratagos Islan. It could be anyone you really want. Now, what he is doing is he is placing his ally protection at, on his first turn on AoE 1 at turn 9 here. A3, that's his ally protection. And then we have Godseeker Aniri, who can be any buff extender. Godseeker Aniri is just good because she heals as well. Any buff extender is going to extend those ally protection buffs 
through to the end of AoE 1, which is really important because as you can see, Lydia is going to take two turns in between that window. So you need the extender to not only extend the ally protection, but also the increased speed buff to keep this in tune. Then at the end of AoE 2, Taragi is going to reapply his ally protection. So we have that protection covering both phases. We're using Rathalos in here for damage. And I think the MVP, actually, another really good champion to pair with Rathalos will be Under Priest Brogni when you're trying to keep him alive. You get a protected shield, which gives you a survivability, a block debuffs, which will hopefully deal with things like the spirit affinity and the stuns if you can time it and get it in the right situation. And we also get an increased attack. So it's giving Rathalos the same thing as Mordecai, but with a little bit more survivability. And these champions go in exactly the same way with Ender Priest Brogni doing his A3 at the start of AoE 1 and then reapplying it at the end of AoE 2 so that we get protection, survivability, and we also get an immunity to the speed debuff. And this team will probably get you into Ultra Nightmare. It might not too key, depending on your gear. It might even one key, depending on your gear. If you've got really strong gear, it can go quite the distance. And Rathalos here is going 2-1. He's going to have increased attack up all the time. He's going to be pumping damage. So again, I will put the link in this description below. Both of these teams can be configured full auto. The only challenge you'll have with this 2-1 team is can you deal with the stun targeting on the end of this sort of stun turn? Because Taragi the Frog and Lydia, both of them, are not with block debuffs any further. So you're going to have to think of like, is there a way to solve it? You could potentially like make um, Taragi a little bit slower and put Brogni in this situation. That means it's all going to go on Lydia. But then are you able to cleanse it off Lydia? That would be the question. So I'm sure the experts out there who comment on the video might go, oh, you just need to do this. Um, I've just looked at this and I thought, oh, that might be a problem. Um, but you can all, always find ways to make it so that it doesn't pick on Lydia and it picks on someone else with block debuffs potentially. I know the boss doesn't like prioritizing ally protected champions, so it should probably either go Brogni or Lydia when it does this ability. So there you go, guys. Four clan boss teams, beginner, sort of traditional 2-1, end game, late game, different options, different pairings that you can do with Rathalos. When you are building him for these teams, you absolutely want to consider whether or not you can go Relentless or not. Most of the time in clan boss, you can't unless you go in the unkillable option like Scratch did. So here you want to basically build non non sort of relentless retaliation is very powerful to extend his a1 decreased defense and when you're building this particular traditional type teams you're gonna have to build some defense i would recommend sort of getting somewhere in the region of three to three and a half thousand defense if you can um, if you have an increased defense buff as well that makes it even better but that's normally a good survival point um, to get you enough sort of sacrifice of damage whilst not sacrificing too much because every point of defense is basically less damage you can deal. So you don't want to sacrifice it too much, but he can't just die. You're going to need to keep him alive. Let me know in the comments below, how are you using your Rathalos? I'm going to be rebuilding mine now to dedicate him more towards a little bit of a Hydra and general build. I'm prioritizing his A1 and his A3. So I will probably put him more into more of a savage, lethal, merciless build. I might even see how much merciless gear I've got, see if I can get him up to a nine out of nine or potentially something else I, it's, you can't really get a, a sort of a six four split because you haven't got enough spots which would have been really nice but i don't think i've got the accessories right now to get him into a nine out of nine extra turn merciless set but i do have some pieces after two months of sin trance that i might be able to swing a pretty good set so we'll see if not it'll probably be like a lethal build i'm gonna push him into that and then i'm gonna prepare my hydra video for tomorrow so we've got the essentials guide. We've now got a clan boss dedicated kind of set of how you would build him, what stat priorities you've got, how you would you know, sort of focus on those things. And we'll see what other areas he's really good for as, as we sort of play around with Wrathalos Blademaster more. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.